Good morning. It is a pleasure to be here introducing a man that obviously needs no introduction. As most people in this room well know, General David Petraeus is widely regarded as our nation's finest soldier, scholar, and warrior. In his current position as commander of U.S. Central Command, he oversees operations in Iraq, Afghanistan, and throughout the CENTCON area of responsibility. Unfortunately, as part of his job, he is scheduled for the Manama Dialogue in Bahrain on December 12th. Convenient? He will literally be on the other side of the world when Navy dominates Army for the eighth consecutive year. <laughs> Please. Prior Please. to taking on this significant role, General Petraeus graduated from West Point, Princeton, and was a top graduate of the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College. In other words, he has made it cool to think in the military and think hard about the complex challenges facing the men and women in uniform today. He gained significant recognition when spearheading what has come to be known as the surge in Iraq, which constituted of a comprehensive counterinsurgency strategy. Along with many other top military thinkers and strategists, he transformed the U.S. standard approach to counterinsurgency by developing and helping to implement the counterinsurgency field manual. I'm fairly confident that despite turning 57 this week, he will, can still outrun most of the brigade and midshipmen, but we are working hard to keep most? up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we are privileged to hear from him this morning, and so with that, please help me in welcoming General David H. Petraeus. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Midshipman Steenberg. Pretty cheeky comment, don't you think, for a uh, Navy Midshipman? <laughs> I think General Petraeus probably likes uh, audacity in future officers. So. We, we do. In <laughs> fact, uh, if I could just respond uh, to that very kind introduction. Um, first of all, I think I really want to thank uh, this great Midshipman, not just for his leadership uh, of the Brigade of Midshipmen, uh, but also for his service uh, as a Marine. Uh, in Iraq uh, in a previous life uh, where he was the uh, crew chief for CH-47s, uh, did a great job over there. As you can see, he earned the Air Medal and a number of other decorations for that. Uh, and I appreciate his uh, comments about the friendly rivalry between our two schools. And I thought I needed to, to do something here today, though, because I, I somehow or other, uh, I came into possession of his door name uh, plate. Um, I was shocked, shocked to learn that somehow or other this had ended up in the hands of one of uh, the members of my team uh, <laughs> during a recent trip to uh, the Naval Academy, I guess. I'm, I'm ast astonished at this. And so anyway, today I wanted to take the opportunity to return this to you. <laughs> Uh, and to note that there's a new engraving on the back that says, Ryan, uh, from Iraq uh, to the Brigade of Midshipmen uh, and beyond, congratulations, Semper Fi, go Army, beat Navy. <laughs> All right, Dr. Hanlon, the floor is yours. I, actually, I, I wonder if I could just say something really quick first, and um, that is really what a privilege it is for the two of us to be here. Uh, we have actually done this once or twice before. We're both proud graduates of the Woodrow Wilson School at Princeton. Uh, we think the motto, Princeton in the nation's service, uh, is a very important one uh, and very meaningful, and each of us have sought to live that motto in, in various fashions. Uh, but, so we're delighted to be here with you today. Um, we appreciate the great gathering that is here today. i uh, love to see the, all the TV cameras up there, which are hoping that I'm going to explain what's been going on in the Situation Room uh, the past couple of months. And, but um, this gathering is titled From the Greatest Generation to the Latest Generation. And, and again, what a wonderful uh, way to cast this, uh, capturing, of course, the accomplishments of those stretching all the way back to the World War II generation uh, to those of the, as you term it, the latest generation, uh, and all of those in between. And it was a privilege to meet some of, the, some of those individuals uh, before we came in here this morning. 
But I wonder if I, I might, with respect, uh, suggest that you title it instead from the greatest generation to the new greatest generation. Uh, because the young men and women who are serving in our military's ranks today in tough places uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan and Pakistan and elsewhere around the world really have, I think, earned that particular description. Uh, it's not one, by the way, that I initiated. Uh, it is one that uh, came from Tom Brokaw, the author of the book, The Greatest Generation, after that that title and those accomplishments, uh, again, of those of the World War II era so magnificently, you know, such a great bestseller. Uh, he was with us in Iraq. Uh, it was several years back. I was a division commander at the time of the great 101st Airborne Division. I hope you all know this uh, it's suitable <laughs> air assault airborne. Thank you. I was hoping there might be a fellow veteran here from that great unit. But he was with us, and he saw all the extraordinary tasks that our troopers were performing. And of course, many of them were not exactly ones that we'd practiced at the National Point Readiness Training Center. These were, in a sense, almost non-doctrinal. Um, you know, they were not just the typical offense and attack and defend kinds of tasks. They were in the stability and support operations arena and so forth. And he really came away, I think, with appropriately, I think, uh, enormous admiration for what our young men and women are doing uh, in these irregular warfare campaigns. And before he got back on the helicopter to head back to, to Baghdad, he grabbed me and shouted into my ear because of the noise of the blades and so forth. And he said, you know, that World War II uh, generation may have been the greatest generation, but what I've seen out here is surely the new greatest generation. Uh, I really subscribe uh, to that description to that concept, uh, the brigade midshipman, despite his audacity there, clearly represents the qualities uh, of that new greatest generation. And so perhaps uh, you could accept that suggestion uh, from your keynote speaker uh, as you look at the title for next year's uh, gathering of this great organization. And with that, I'll hand off to Mike. Brookings wingman here. General, thank Dr. you. Hanlon. Thank you so much for the reception we, you both accorded us today and for the great honor of interviewing General Petraeus. I just want to say a couple of quick words. Uh, one is that when I was in Afghanistan this week, I had the pleasure of seeing General McChrystal and handing him a copy of the New York Times magazine that recently has in print the admission by General Petraeus that General McChrystal is a faster runner. Uh, he and was at one time. That was, that was when we were time. captains. Good. I'm glad to get that clarified that, that, on the record. Someone uh, needs to check the last race that we did together. I will never race again if I have my way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I also, uh, as a civilian, want on this week of Veterans Day uh, to thank veterans, the new greatest generation, and everyone in their families who supports them, because I know how much that part of the job is crucial to what's going on around the world as well for all that you've done for our country. And so uh, on behalf of all of us, thank you uh, to all of you. Let me cool. just stop. Yeah.